In this segment, you're going to learn about a man named Travis Mills who served in the 82nd Airborne of the United States Army. Travis was in Afghanistan when he was seriously wounded by an exploded IED, despite these life-changing injuries. Today, he views himself as a very, very happy man. Hardline host Ed Berlinger spoke with this former United States Army Staff Sergeant and author of the inspiring book, Tough As They Come. You had a tough time. You were one of only five Afghanistan war veterans to survive a quadruple amputation. You came home. You're spending time in the hospital. And you even pointed out that there was a time when ending your own life seemed like an option. How do you fight through those nights and those days when you're faced with that? Well, I mean, I wasn't in any old place to end my life. I just didn't know why I survived this and what kind of life I could have. I didn't have much self-worth, I didn't think. And honestly, when I woke up from my, uh, I don't know, my last surgery my on the 18th of April, I woke up, my wife, I told her, take my daughter, she was six months old, take, you know, everything we have, the house, the cars, the money, and just, you know, go, f like, do something else. Like, don't worry about having to put up with me. And she said, that's not how this works, and I have to... I'll be here for you. We're going to get through this. And then my little girl's sitting there on my stomach, laying there, uh, pinching my nose, a six month old, giggling, not thinking I'm a monster. And uh, right from there, I just said, oh, well, if they're going to be with me, then I had to fight through like the fact that I couldn't open jars to figure out how I could open jars. And then I had a ketamine coma to fix my pain. And then I met a gentleman that was in my same situation. And he walked in my room, I was two fake legs with two fake hands. And I was just like, oh, it can be done. And I thought, might as well get after it. There's two ways to live your life either in pity and sorrow or happiness and keep pushing forward. And I was not going to be the one that was grumpy and angry for the next 60 years of my life. Is that what we miss sometimes, Staff Sergeant? You mentioned your wife and your daughter, the families, how important they are. And I got to believe that so many veterans come back and they say, you don't want to be with me. This, this isn't going to be your life. Live your life. But when you look in the eyes of your wife and your child, that has to be the moment that you realize whatever you have to go through, it's worth it. Oh, absolutely. I, uh, I go around speaking throughout the nation, and my last, uh, or one of my last slides is actually uh, perspective. And I put it this way to everybody, I, you know, you can dwell on the past. I reminisce the past. I can't change the past. But if you think about the men and women that have, you know, sacrificed their lives for this country that will never see their families again. I mean, I have a lot of friends that um, have perished that won't see their daughters grow and their sons grow and they'll be with their wives to, you know, go through life with. And it's just kind of a slap in the face to not keep pushing forward for them because their family members would give anything to have them in my situation. And I just don't feel like I could give up on myself because I'd be giving up on them and their sacrifice for this country, as well as the you know nine doctors and seven nurses that worked 14 hours straight, making sure I stayed alive. Two nurses for nine hours pumped air into my lungs just so I could breathe still. And, um, you know, it'd be a true... It'd be a true selfish act if I just gave up myself with my little girl looking at me. And uh, I'll tell you what, I just got off the trampoline a little bit ago <laughs> because that's what we were doing. I took her to school this morning. I went and got my wife and I breakfast. I went to the gym and, uh, you know, my, my daughter got home and we went on the trampoline for a little bit. And um, I'm just truly, truly blessed to still be alive and still be around. And then I go around telling my story because people get something out of it. They can, they can see little bits of their story and my story. And I don't make it up like, you know, you should... If you think you have a bad look at me, I never say that in my speeches because I don't feel that way. You know, I didn't serve any more than anybody else, and I also am not wounded any more than anybody else. I'm just, I'm just a guy that had an injury that's now recovered with scars, living life, you know, the best way, like, like you said, the best way I know how. That's it for the hard line this evening. I'm Dennis Michael Lynch. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night.